the cry from the root of the mandrake plant can kill a, fr can kill a fully grown man. But it's also a plant that is critical to use in manufacturing a potion that will cure somebody who has been exposed to a basilisk stare. This was a very memorable plant from Harry Potter and it interacted with a very memorable monster from Harry Potter. But how do you build such fauna and flora for your fantasy world? How do you create a memorable environment that will draw in consumers of your world and transport them to your fantasy realm? Welcome, fellow world builders, to another episode of Just In Time Worlds. Today, I would like to discuss fauna and flora and how to build them in a fantasy world. So firstly, I'm not going to discuss sentient species today. Predominantly, I'm going to discuss animals and plants. And I'm going to break this topic down into fantastical versus magical, natural versus constructed. And finally, I am going to give you five questions to answer when you're building your fauna and flora to guide you through making it feel as though it is a well thought out animal or plant that could actually live in its world. Before we get before we get going, please do hit the subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow. OK, let's get cracking. First, let's talk about fantastical versus magical. So what I mean by this is that there are some animals that are fantastical in that they are not part of what you would expect to see in our world. But they are not inherently magical and they do not form a part of the magic system of the world that they're in. An example of this comes from Raymond Faist and his book set in the Empire of Tsurani. Now, why these creatures are fantastical is because they all have six limbs. And there are many of them. There are many different types of creatures that are all of the six limbed type. And they were the natural evolutionary product of their world. So there's nothing inherently magical about them. Um, but they are extremely fantastical and reading about them transports you into that world. It makes that world seem both alien and fascinating. To, uh, to the readers of the Empire of Tsurani. Now, on the other side of the fence, you can have magical creatures like and magical plants like the mandrake and the basilisk that I referenced from Harry Potter. These plants and animals are part of your magic system. They either use your magic system or they provide input and power sources to it, like the mandrake being used to make a potion. This is a great example of a plant that actually feeds into your magic system as a power source. There are also examples of animals who use magic. Um, the most memorable one for me comes from Airbender, uh, comes from Avatar The Last Airbender, where Aang learns to firebend from dragons. He learns to uh, he learns earthbending techniques from the badger moles. Now, what's really interesting about um, the creatures of the last of the world of the last Airbender is that it blends the fantastical and the magical. You have creatures like the badger mole, who's an actual user of bending. But you also have just plain old fantastical creatures like the ostrich, like the horse ostrich, which is fantastical but not magical. And that illustrates beautifully the difference between these two. You can also use fantastical or magical fauna and flora in your religion. A really good example of this comes from George R. R. Martin, who gave us the wayerwood trees, the trees that have the faces carved into them. These trees um, are used by green tree seers to observe the land, but they are also a central part of the religion of the first men in that they, they go there to worship under the weirwood trees, under the trees with faces carved into them um, as 
they were taught by the children of the forest. So incorporating such fantastical fauna or flora into your religion that's local to your world really gives you depth in your religion as well as giving you that fantastical element to transport your, your readers into this world. Now, speaking of George R. R. Martin's weirwood trees, they were a natural product of their environment, but they were also partially constructed in that the faces were carved into them. And that segues us into natural versus constructed. So you can have creatures that evolve naturally. Again, Raymond E. Face does this really well. But if you're going to have natural evolution be the cause of these fantastical creatures, then you have to populate the rest of the world with creatures that share similarity with them. Otherwise, it becomes incredibly incongruous. You can't have naturally occurring dragons, but have no worms, no fire-breathing lizards. That, that stops making sense at that point. So if you're going to have creatures that are naturally evolving, they must, there must have been other things that are like them. Otherwise, it seems unnatural. And if you have constructed things, you must think about things like, how do they propagate? Does it have they become living things now? Or maybe it's a natural construction. The blast-ended scroots from Harry Potter are a great example of a natural construction in that Hagrid bred them. But once they've been bred, maybe they can just propagate naturally and they are now a natural product of the world. Or maybe it's an actual construct, like the war forge from Eberron. And in that case, how do they become more? Do they become more? Or do they just stay the same amount as they are now forever? And are there then people who want to make more of them? And that becomes a plot and a story point around this constructed life form. In summary, what are those five tips for making your own fantasy flora and fauna? The first thing you need to ask yourself is what does it look like? If it's an animal, does it have feathers, fur, scales? If it is a plant, does it have vines or branches? Does it have needles or does it have leaves? Maybe it has a flower. What it looks like is obviously an extremely important element of including such a thing in a fantasy world. Then you should ask yourself, is it magical or is it fantastical? Um, does it actually use the magic of your world? Does it give input into the magic of your world? Do you use it to create potions? Or is it fantastical, but in, not in any way related to the magic of your world? Or maybe the magic of your world created it, but now it stands free and independent of that magic. Then is it natural or constructed? Was it bred by someone? Was it created by someone? Or has it evolved naturally and this is what everything in your world looks like? What environment does it live in? Is it a desert creature? Maybe it only lives in cities. Maybe it lives close to the power source of your world and it feeds off the nodes and ley lines. Maybe it's a creature that needs to feed off humans, like a vampire bat. So what environment does the creature ideally live in? And lastly, how does the creature propagate? This is actually both fascinating and quite important. If it propagates by means of natural reproduction, what are the courtship rituals involved? And the reason why I ask that is because if you look at our world and you look at the inspiration that you can draw from it, scorpions have this courtship ritual where they dance with each other with their pincers interlocked. And it, it's fascinating to read about. I've watched a few videos on the topic as well. And it was just 
it enormously informed my propagation rituals for my various insect life that I've created in my world. Um, mushrooms release spores and their whole breeding ritual is equally fantastic. I, in fact, I made a short about mushrooms that you can check out over here. And it was, it, it was so informative and so fascinating. I didn't know these things. And if you include elements like that in your fantasy world, in your fantasy fauna and flora, it makes it so much more real to consumers of your world. It makes them feel as though they are honestly being transported into this place which is real but fantastical. So think about how things propagate and add elements of that behavior into your description of the fauna or flora. And believe me, you will have a much more realistic look and feel to your creatures. Look, at, look to our natural world for inspiration. We have got fascinating, fascinating animals in here um, that you can utilize to build fauna and flora with. That is my take on fauna and flora in a fantasy world. I do hope that you've liked this video. Please do hit the like button if you have. Drop me a comment below as to what is the most interesting fauna and flora you've ever seen in a fantasy world. And I will see you on Friday for another episode of Just In Time Worlds.